So hopefully the applet there helped you uh, kind of wrap your brain around the idea of probability and see some of these patterns and some of these uh, things emerging here. So let's take a look, uh, let's take a little bit more of a deeper look here at probability then. So probability is empirical. So by that, we mean that it's based on observation, not my theoretical calculations. Okay? If I wanted to say that there's a 50% chance that I'm going to roll a die and it's going to give me an even number, then I have to roll a die a whole bunch of times and make sure that that actually is, a, is really going to happen. I can't just assume that. Okay? There's also what we call the law of large numbers, where my that's that again that idea of this very large um series of repetitions and that's how we get that probability pattern confirmed okay i know that the chance is 50 percent that i'm going to roll an even number on this die is because a die was rolled a whole bunch of times okay now that could have been done um via simulation you don't have to physically roll the die you could have run a computer program for it Okay, but it was rolled a whole bunch of times. Okay, and so that's how we're able to confirm our probability there. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. So according to the Book of Odds website, the probability that a randomly selected U.S. adult usually eats breakfast is 0.61. So part A, explain what probability 0.61 means in this setting. Well, in this setting, there's my probability number, right? It's between 0 and 1. Okay, and what this means, again, using our context, because we're in stats and we have to always use context, is that if I take a large sample of U.S. adults, okay, so again, we're going in context here, they have to be U.S. adults, okay, and it needs to be a pretty large sample for me to be able to confirm probability. So if I take a large sample of U.S. adults, the probability that they usually eat breakfast is 61% percent that they will say, yes, I eat breakfast. So part B there, why doesn't this probability say that if 100 U.S. adults are chosen at random, exactly 61 of them usually eat breakfast? Okay. Well, again, 100 is not really that big of a sample. And from sample to sample, my variation, I'm going to have a little bit of variation there with how many people eat breakfast. I may take 10 samples of 100 people and I may get 64 people that eat breakfast and 58 people that eat breakfast. And so I get a little bit of variation in there. Okay? This 61% is the pattern from a very large sample. Okay? Part two there then, probability is a measure of how likely an outcome is to occur. Match one of the probabilities that follow each statement. Be prepared to defend your answer. Okay, so part A there tells me that the outcome is impossible. It can never occur. Well, if the outcome is impossible and can never occur, that means it's zero times going to happen. Okay, so zero would be my best probability for that one there. Okay, uh, part B, the outcome is certain. It will occur on every trial. I am guaranteeing that this outcome is going to occur every single time. Well, that's going to happen. That means it's going to happen 100%. So my probability there, again, is now is 1. Part C says the outcome is very unlikely, but it will occur once in a while in a long sequence of trials. That means I need a really small probability here because it's not very likely, okay? but it can occur, so it's not zero. Okay? And if I do bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of trials and repetitions, I eventually might have this happen. Okay? Well, my smallest choice there is the 0.01 which would come out to 1% of the trials. So not very likely, but still a possibility. And then part D, the outcome will occur more often than not. Okay? Well, I want the outcome to occur more often than not, which means I need it to occur more than half the time. Okay, So I've got two options there for more than half the time. It's the 0.6 and the 0.99. Okay? And my sentence here just tells me I want it to occur more often than not. It does not say that it's going to occur almost every time. So my best answer here is 0.6. It's going to be occurring more than half the time, okay, but it is not going to be occurring pretty much every single time. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about randomness then. So streaks and probability. We know probability is predictable over time in the long run, but what about when we're really, you know, in the short run? We've got a really just a couple of, uh, series happening, just uh, a few tries. Is this, is the idea of probability really going to 
still hold up here. So let's take a look at an example here. So flipping coins. Toss a coin six times and record heads or tails on each toss. Which of the following outcomes is more probable? That I get heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, or that I get tails, 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 heads, heads, heads. Technically, my answer is that both outcomes are equally likely. Every time I flip that coin, I am technically, every time I flip that coin, I have a 50-50 shot of getting a heads or tail. The second coin flip, like, so this second coin flip right here where I got tails, okay, the first one did not influence the second one. Over here where I got three tails in a row, just because I got a tails here does not alter my ability to get a tails or a heads in the next coin flip. Each coin flip is independent of the one before. They do not change based on the one that happened before. So I've got a 50-50 chance each of each outcome each time. Okay, The second one, um, I don't, it says there that we think it's the second because it looks random, but it's not the random of statistics. Um, I disagree with that statement. The second one to me looks very not random because they're in order. The first one to me glancing at it looks more probable, but again, they really both are because each one of those coins flips is independent. So let's look at our law of, uh, what looks at what this says, the law of averages. Belief in this phony law of averages can lead to serious consequences. A few years ago, an advice columnist published a letter from a distraught mother of eight girls. She and her husband had planned to visit their family to four, to limit their family to four children, but they wanted to have at least one boy. When the first four children were all girls, they tried again and again and again. After seven straight girls, even her doctor had assured her that the law of averages was in our favor, 100 to one. Unfortunately for this couple, having children is like tossing coins. Eight girls in a row is highly unlikely. But once seven girls have been born, it's not at all unlikely that the next child will be a girl. And it was. Again, this is, like they said, it's the same as flipping the coins. There is no law of averages here. Just because I flipped a whole bunch of heads does not mean I should get a tails now. Just because they had seven girls does not mean now that they should get a boy. Okay? Every baby is a separate brand new event. So the likelihood for every each of those babies is a 50-50 shot. Okay, so that that law of averages thing doesn't exist. Okay, so let's look at this example here. Sorry that the answers are already up there for you. Okay, liar, liar. Sometimes people use a lie detector, polygraph, to help determine if the suspect is telling the truth. Okay, a, a lie detector test isn't foolproof. Sometimes it gives those false positives. Okay, other times it gives them a false negative. The probability for this particular brand of polygraph machine is a false positive of 0.08. Okay, interpret this probability as a long run relative frequency. So my 0.08 translates to 8% and it's a false positive. Okay, so let's think back to the beginning now. So a false positive tells me that the machine is wrong because it's false and the machine is checking for lying. So the machine is saying that this person is telling a lie when in, in reality, they are actually telling the truth. So in context here, my point eight means that 8% of the time, the machine will say that someone is lying when they are really telling the truth. Okay, a false negative, so is, which is a more serious error in this case, part B, a false positive or false negative. So a false positive says that they are lying when they are telling the truth and a false negative says that they are telling the truth when they are in fact lying. So if I, which one of these I think is more serious, okay, you'd have to kind of just, you could logic out either one of those probably. A false positive being that they think that that person is lying. So the person is really telling the truth. And so they are most likely innocent, um, but they are being investigated and possibly being held, um, uh, as guilty, whereas a false negative would, they're basically, they're such a good liar that they are lying, but the machine thinks they're telling the truth. And so they could be guilty and not actually telling the truth.